Hey, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today's channeling session is going to be a little bit different because I'm actually going to communicate with someone who I get tons of requests to communicate with. But, this is a big, humongous but, I am going to do it in a way that is respectful to everyone, that is connected to the person and the situations around this person. And uh, to the best of my ability, I am going to try to stay respectful and compassionate. And I can't promise that I will 100% achieve that goal, but that's what my intention is. And I'm not about the drama or the hype around this person, and I'm not about, I am not going to put up with any kind of crap in the comments and no back and forth and no, I take this side, I take that side. I don't want that. That's not the point of this. And I recognize that no matter what I want or don't want, there will be people who view this video who are not polite and considerate of my wishes for sharing the video. And so we can't expect everybody to have really good manners. I'll do my best to keep weeding the garden and keep the comments um, in a place where it's not hurtful to the individual people who are commenting because I don't want fights in my comment section. Now I say all this stuff because I anticipate as I'm saying this, I'm like, why am I even channeling this person? Why? I've channeled them before and that's exactly what happened. <laughs> so I may end up not having comments on this video and that's just the way it is. So, and if you send me emails about it, I just won't be reading them. I'm just gonna be honest and let you know that straight up front. So we're going to talk with Michael Jackson and the reason why, thank you, Bridget. He said, thank you. Thank you, Bridget. He's got his black hat on and his hair is kind of hanging down. His face is very, very white, very white, pale, like almost like he has talcum powder on it. And he's sitting down and I am channeling Michael Jackson because he is top of my mind today. And here's why. So I have a playlist. Um, uh, I call it my walking and running music, which I don't really run. I mean, on the run you know, like doing errands. And I have a playlist and I have a wide variety of music. I like a lot of genres, probably like you guys, you know, anything from country to, you know, funky dance music, you know, techno, some techno stuff, some rap music, um, you know, Michael Jackson, Prince, all of just so many different, you know, a lot, lots of different kinds of, of music and stuff. And that would spark probably all different age groups and things. So I was on a walk and I was thinking about, I was listening to my playlist and I, was, I got to my, some Michael Jackson songs and I thought, you know, I wonder if I should, how do I really feel about connecting with his music now? After he and I have talked for the past few years off and on and kind of worked um, in private session and I mentioned this in a previous video, check out the Michael Jackson playlist if you're interested, where I think I probably, sh I know I shared that I kind of, the first couple of experiences I had with Michael Jackson was almost like as a coach or therapist with him and I'm not a therapist, I'm not a counselor. I'm not a mental health care professional. I am a coach, a really good life coach. And where he was talking to me about things about his personal life, about the charges against him, the allegations against him, but all sorts of stuff. And I could see different facets of his personality and different um, kind of tactics in the way he was pre presenting himself energetically, knowing that I was a huge mega fan from like fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade. I mean, I loved Michael Jackson. I had all, in fact, one of the videos I show all my memorabilia that I still have from when I was like in fifth and sixth grade. Loved him, loved him. God, did I love him. And, you know, had the glove, had the doll, had the books, I had the, I mean, posters, buttons, all of it, you know? And, kind of coming to terms with his humanity or his humanness and the flaws around him as a person and trying to understand if it was like celebrity or the way he was raised or his unique talent or his, it was, a, was it his, his mental health? His, did he have a problem? Was he a predator? What, you know, trying to come to terms with all these different parts of him that I know. And so, Today I'm connecting with him because he, I thought about the songs in the playlist and he came again, I could see him. And he has come before and oftentimes he'll try to come when 
um, or I, how should I say this? I will notice his energy sometimes when I'm channeling with print, then all of a sudden I will feel Michael Jackson. And probably because Michael Jackson and Prince had kind of this two different camps of, of fans, it wasn't likely that you were a fan of both, really. You were like a diehard of Michael or a ride or die for Prince. And it was kind of, it was pretty segregated from my experience anyway, you were one or the other. And, and they were both getting really, really popular during that time too, because like Purple Rain came out to not to you know during that time as well that princess movie and stuff so there was kind of this a little bit of a a competition or rivalry i think between the fan bases i don't know personally those two but the fan bases specifically and so i to just feel into his energy just with him is unique for me for a while now, because as soon as I had channeled them the first time, I wasn't interested in doing it again. I am talking a lot, and people are going to hate that. He says, oh, yeah, people are going to complain. He says, Michael Jackson does have some very <laughs> wise words. He says, people are going to complain no matter what you do. You can't make everybody happy. He said, you should know that by now, Bridget. I do know that, and, and I appreciate having conversation with you, and I feel Elizabeth Taylor with you. She was someone that loved you very much. Oh, yes, yeah, she did. She was like a mother to me, he said, but don't, don't, I don't know that she would want me to say that because she doesn't want to consider herself old, you know. I know, I do know that. Yes, indeed, I know that. And um, then he says something about, so do you think bad of me now? He's literally asking me what I think of him. And I have my sunglasses on, you guys, because it's really, really bright out here. Maybe I should just take them off and try to just, because then you can see, right? You can really see, sometimes you can tell a person's truth by their eyes, right? All right, so I'm gonna be blinking a lot though because it's very bright out here. He says, oh, you have beautiful eyes. You have such beautiful eyes, Bridget. Thank you, that's very nice of you to say that, thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I think you were partial to blonde hair and blue eyes, huh? <laughs> I think so. Well, Debbie had that, you know, yeah. Um, just he says beautiful he says it seems like you know people always want we always want what we don't have well maybe in some cases that might be true yeah that might be true I don't want you he says I don't want you to think poorly of me I know and I can't tell you that I don't either I'm I really don't want to judge I don't feel like I should be a judge or critical of anybody else's life choices or behaviors. It's easy for us to do that, you know, to look at someone else and say, you're bad. But yet there's also this part of me, I'm a mother, you know, and there's a lot of blame to go around, let me say that. There's a lot of blame to go around and a lot of um, responsibilities a lot of individuals that are responsible that have not taken responsibility, including you. And so I have, yeah, I take an issue with that. I do take an issue with that because I think publicly it puts people like myself in a difficult situation who are fans. Like I'm a fan of Michael Jackson, but am I a fan of Michael as an icon or as a human being? Like the music, the genius, can I still listen to your music and appreciate you and your work? and your performance and your entertainment when I have such a conflict about you and your behaviors as a person, as a human, and no one actually knows the truth, so to speak, or the facts, and except the people who are directly involved. And so let's be clear on that. So all, everything is a alleged or allegations and, you know, all of that. And so I don't want to take sides, but I do, I am going to tell you that I'm very conflicted. And I want to be clear with the audience and the viewers here at Above Life Channel about that too, because I feel, and I'm not coming from a place of conflict from fear, like I'm afraid necessarily of how other people will judge or what they will say in the comments or whatever, even though like I went and did that whole thing about the comments, but let's be honest, comments are a pain in the butt. They're a pain in the butt on YouTube, such a pain in the butt. Because you get wonderful people and then every once in a while, somebody comes along and they're just a jerk and they're a jerk to everybody in the comments. I don't care if they're a jerk to me, but when they're mean to other people, that just bugs me, bugs me. 
says, yeah, you feel protective of your fans. You feel protective. Yes, I do. I do feel protective. Well, I felt like that too, he says. I felt like that too. I felt like that too, but what if nobody's there to protect you? Nobody's there to protect you, he says. Nobody's there to protect you. Nobody protected me. Who protected me? Oh, Michael, I would say a lot of people protected you. I think there was a lot of controversy, a lot of very serious, very serious criminal questions about your choices. And I think that's fair. I think that's 100% fair, not because you're a celebrity, but because you're a person whose behaviors called into question what is morally right and what is wrong and what is hurtful to others, especially to children, especially that. Someone in a position of power, utilizing power in a way that is not healthy or safe for others is not acceptable and should not be acceptable. I, to me, it's not acceptable. That's not the kind of environment we want in our society, like for our kids, for, for each other, you know? He says, well, I can understand that. I can understand that, but you also don't understand. You don't, you don't know. You don't know. He says, you don't understand, Bridget. You just, you don't understand. You're right, I don't understand. Can you explain to me? Can you share why you had best friends that were young boys, especially, who slept in your bed with you, who would just be with you without their parents in, in uh, around, who would go on trips with you, who, I mean, can you explain? Can you explain? Because you never, that wasn't something you ever, you, you said, yeah, I had kids in my house. I had kids in my bed. I had boys in my bed. I had, you know, can you, can you explain that that's, that's normal? You think that's like a acceptable behavior? How would you feel about your sons in that situation? He says, now that's not fair. That's not fair. He says, now that's not fair. I think it's up to each individual parent. They must really trust the people that are around their children. And I was trusted. Those families trusted me. I was like a member of their family. And he says, when um, you go on a vacation with your family and a, a brother and sister would sleep in the same bed, you wouldn't say that was out of the ordinary or improper. But yet, you and others will judge me for that. I don't know that I'm judging you for that. I'm just, I'm just telling you that that's not, that makes people think that you are a predator, a child predator. And if you didn't want people to think that you're a child predator, then you shouldn't act like a child predator. And I'm going to be very blunt with you because I think you can handle it. And I'm a bit frustrated with the way that you work the energy of things and understanding that now as a spirit you would have a higher more evolved view of things he says but I'm not but I'm not I'm not okay he says I'm not okay but I'm not okay because I know that there's other psychics Michael that talk with you and get a totally different perspective of you and as I have in the past as well and I've tried to stay away from this whole topic and I feel like that's wrong of me to do that. It's wrong of me to not be open about the, the questions that I have. And I don't know that it's going to resolve or change anything for me. I don't know if I'll stop listening to your music. I can't even imagine that. It's oh, such a huge part of my life growing up. It's such a, an important part of my life. It makes me remember things and brings me right back to a time when, you know, you're more carefree. But knowing that, that during that time and on, that you potentially were hurting others that are vulnerable and you're so charismatic. You have this charisma about you, this charm, this boy-like charm. And you have this energy about you that you can convince anyone to believe in themselves and you can see things in them and inspire them. And yet I feel like that could be really manipulated. And that's not fair. That's not right to do that. That's really hurtful. Even if there wasn't criminal acts or criminal behavior, just those things alone are not not 
circumstances or situations that would feel just for me. Like, I, I, I don't, like, that's not, that's just not okay to even act in that manner or be that way, to like kind of misuse your power is what it feels like. So it's, you don't understand, you don't understand. You don't understand. You, you, well, help me understand, help me understand. There are a lot of parts of my life that I don't discuss, that I haven't disclosed. And I know, and I know that, because you've alluded to that. We've had talk around this topic where potentially you were an abused victim yourself. And in fact, I may have actually talked about this in another video. I can't remember what I've actually shared publicly and not because I've had multiple conversations with him, many that I have not shared because I just, I felt like, I just, I didn't really, and to be honest, I was in Above Life Channel too early and I didn't want to invoke a big fight. Like I didn't want to become a target of hate myself just because I was talking about this difficult issue. But I feel like now it's important. It's like, well, why now? Why now? Because it's important to recognize that children or anybody that has been through any kind of trauma where they trusted a relationship with an adult and other adults, not just you, but maybe their mom or their dad, their parents, that kind of a thing. And they were betrayed not just by you, but by that, but by their parents who are supposed to kind of be a buffer for them. And I'm not suggesting that it's the parents fault or that it's that I'm not blaming the parents. I'm a parent. I'm not blaming the parents because I know as a parent, you can't know everything about all your kids. And, you know, I, and I'm also not going to make excuses for them either because there has to be some responsibility from the parents and from you, the person that has the power in the relationship. And it was unequal power. Like you had something that they wanted. And he says, well, who uses who? Like who is in the wrong? The person seeking to get something from me because I have fame or me just seeking the companionship and friendship of others that I can't get. I can't have a normal life and I wanted a normal life. I wanted some, no, 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 no. You can't say that you wanted a normal life. You can't have it both ways. You can't have a normal life three days a week or for a week or something and then all of a sudden go back to, oh, now I'm the king of pop and I can get access to this hotel and that, that at Disney and close it down at night and all that. You can't have it both ways. He says, well, why not? Is that fair? Is that fair? So I do get this, this very distinct difference. There's a line that's drawn between the part of you, Michael, that's an inner child part of you that really is not developed. There's an underdeveloped part. You guys hear me say this in his spirit. That's the inner child that's very underdeveloped, that's not attached in a healthy way, that doesn't have healthy relationships with adults, that didn't grow up being in a position of power, even though you, Michael, had the talent and the skill and all of it, but you were controlled by others, particularly your father and others in the industry. And there were so many expectations on you. I'm not saying that that's any kind of an excuse for your behavior as an adult, but I am offering that I can see your inner child not developed, not attached. I have personally been learning more about um, trauma and the effects of long, long term of trauma on people and the distrust and relationships that occur because of it, whether it's like a toxic stress kind of a thing, like a repetitive pattern of just incredible amount of stress, expectation, intolerance of stress, or whether it's specific um, traumatic events, a series of events such as abuse. And I can see that clearly you have, you have the signs of that. When I look at your life and I look at like your career and some of the, the kind of seemingly random things that were reported that you did or kind of the crazy things. And then also the allegations against you and then the settled, the settlements that happened and then the, um, all of the stuff and all of the mental health stuff. It's clear to me that you suffered trauma and this inner child, when I look at you, I see this inner child that's not developed, not able to attach. And so part of me knows then that there is a compassion that is required in this situation that is deserved also, that you did not have the nurturing, the loving, the normal, normal life opportunities that other kids have had. And so it would make sense from a psychological standpoint that you would want to maybe fill that void or fill that niche or find that part of yourself or invite that 
childhood part of yourself in to have the love and the experiences and the fun that you didn't get to have. So I understand that from that perspective, but I don't understand, what I don't understand is the long-term persistent behaviors that appear to be almost calculated, like, but then I also feel like there's this part of you that you can't help yourself. And I'm not say, suggesting that that's okay. I'm just acknowledging that you guys, I can feel this. I can't help myself. I can't help myself. Um, why did you prefer being around children? You know, having friends that were young, all the kids that you, you surrounded yourself with? Because they're great, he says. They just, they look at you and they just appreciate everything. They don't have, they, they just are, they appreciate. They are appreciative. They don't, they don't want anything from you that you can't give them. Oh, interesting. So in adult relationships, did you feel like you were on even ground with the people that you were in relationship with? Like I know, like you and Debbie, that you were friends and things like that. Um, did you feel like you were on even ground with her? He says, I could trust Debbie. Like we could, you know, have a conversation and, and really um, talk about things. And she knew me, or she, at least she thought she knew me and I thought I knew her, but then she, he said, but that changed. There were some things that happened and that changed. He says, there's a betrayal there of trust and that changed. So Debbie must have betrayed his trust and that changed. And then what about Lisa Marie? Because Lisa Marie Presley was, was a wife, was someone that you were married to as well. And she was um, someone very famous and things. It, you know, our relationship was very, um, it was mutual. Um, when you're both very famous, he says, when you're both very famous, it's... Hear the train, you guys? Of course, the train's going by. <laughs> Get on the train, yeah. When you're both famous and you've grown up famous, it's it's like normal, you know, to have paparazzi and cameras and you, you don't have to explain it. It just, it's just an understanding. Like you both know, you both know what it's, that's like and, and you know what to expect. So were you in love with her? It was, he's making me feel like they were going steady almost like, like young, like you feel really young. Yeah, she made me feel like a, a kid, you know, like a teenager, like I could date and stuff. And she made it easy to just be Michael Jackson, you know? She made it easy, she, she understood, she knew what it meant. So was it like a normal marriage? Like, what the, were you guys intimate? I mean, I know that's really personal to ask, but I'm gonna ask because I think it's, I feel like there's questions around that. Yes, he said, yes, I think that's private. And he said, I think that's private. I don't know, I don't really want to um, talk about that, but yes, he said, yes. Okay. And so did you love her? Yes, of course I did. Of course I did. I still do. He says, I still do. I love her. And why didn't your relationship work out? He says, it was mutual, but I couldn't give her what she needed. I think that she looked, he says, I think she looked to me. I think we were both lonely and frustrated with trying to live alone and to be alone and I think we just found each other at the right time I think it was maybe more of a timing thing but I love her he says I love her and it feels like a friendship yeah very much he said yeah yeah okay I hope you don't think I'm being mean to you no I expected you to have questions and challenges and we're not going to, I'm not going to talk about details of things and I'm not going to get into things specifically. I just, I felt like I needed to acknowledge and have this conversation with you because I thought it was the right, you know, the right, the right thing to do and to record it. I, I don't know for sure if I'll share this video. I would like to, but we'll see. We'll see. Would you be mad at me if I did? That's what I'm telling him. No, I think you, I think you are afraid to talk about all, all the things and 
I understand that you don't want a bunch of um, hateful comments and I understand that. And that's what I would get if we went deeper and we really talked about stuff and I shared some of the energy of what I see and sense and feel around you around the situations. But I also want to honor anyone that has been in a situation where they have been abused and that the abuse voice matters, that the person who is the victim, the person who is in the position of lesser power deserves to have a voice and deserves to be heard and deserves to heal regardless of what other people believe or don't believe. They deserve to heal. And so I'm going to say that as well. And to me, that's incredibly brave for someone to come forward and to tell their story. Regardless of not just the situation, but any situation or circumstance. All right, so that's what I have to say. I said, are you going to keep my songs? Yes, for now I will. Yeah, for right now I will. I will right now, yeah. Yeah. All right, you guys, that's a deep conversation with Michael Jackson in the afterlife talking about some very serious things energetically. And I've talked about some issues. I've talked around some issues because I don't want to use triggering words or phrases or things like that here, especially on YouTube. But I also want to respect the different views and opinions and feelings of all who may watch this video. Again, in the comments, please be kind to one another. There's no sides here. I may actually disable the comments. If there's a problem, if it becomes a problem, I will disable the comments. I'm not sure if I'm going to share this, like I said. I hope so. Maybe I should, you know, really give a lot of variety of perspective to afterlife channeling and communication and how we can get different pieces of information at different times and through different um, connections with the same individual. We can get different pieces of information that give us more of a fuller view and an understanding of that person's life and their experiences as well. So this is Bridget. You've been watching Above Life Channel. Every week I channel afterlife celebrity guests and the goal is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. This week I hope that we've done that on the part of being an advocate for people who have gone through incredible traumatic experiences, especially those who have suffered abuse and that they have so much courage and so much honor in sharing their story and in healing. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again next week.